Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Salab back again to talk about QuakeCon 2015 and our impressions with the Fallout 4 panel. Now, first and foremost, I want to say I apologize for it being such a long time, about a week now since I've actually posted a video. I actually kind of got a little bit of the nerd flu for the first time, really sick, and now I'm over it, so I'm able to record this video for you guys. And now I'm taking a little bit of a different approach of it than other press are doing, other people out there in the games media. There's a lot of people that are really talking about, you know, everything that was said at the panel, and I'm not really wanting to talk about that. I'm wanting to talk about kind of the highlights of everything and what I really enjoyed with what I saw. Now one of the first things I want to talk about is the names of the characters and I think a lot of people out there were kind of confused on what exactly he meant whenever Todd said that there was going to be thousands of names to choose from that, that Mr. Handy could actually say. Now when they say thousands of names they don't just mean what Mr. Handy could say, they mean thousands of names that multiple characters throughout the wasteland will be able to say back to you. So if they know your name, they'll call out your name or whatever. These are all program names that they have in the system itself. So one of the cool things about Mr. Handy is that he'll be able to call out multiple names and also they kind of changed up the way they build Mr. Handy. He's actually built from the inside out. So whenever you blow up a Mr. Handy, you'll be able to see all of his working pieces. Like if you blow one up and he falls to the ground, or falls all over the place, you will be able to see every interworking piece from Mr. Handy. Another thing they showed off with Mr. Handy or Codsworth, they were calling, uh, they, they showed a few names like John, McFly, uh, Mr. Boobies, and then they showed another one that got everyone tripping really fast, and it was Mr. Fuckface. So yeah, if you want to run around the wasteland and be called Mr. Fuckface, then you have the total ability to do so now. Now another thing I really liked is that they showed off dog meat and how dog meat was really actually based on a real dog in Fallout 4. Now dog meat is based on River who is one of the developer's dogs. Uh, it's actually the lead designer's dog and uh, it's really awesome how they plan on doing this. Now they said the reason why they wanted to bring in a real dog and kind of record it just doing stuff and I think they said it, it spent almost three years with the dog coming up to the office all the time here and there. Uh, they wanted to have uh, a little bit of a feel of what the dog would be doing while you're traversing the wasteland. If you're stopping and looking at something and you're not using the dog, what would the dog be doing? Is it just going to sit there like a docile blank slate and just wait for you to command it? Or is it going to be actually like a real dog and have certain ticks to where it kind of walks around and like sniffs the ground or looks for things? Another awesome thing is that it, it can actually loot enemies um, for you. Uh, and one other thing they shown off a little bit later on in the demo, and this isn't really going to get too delve too far into what, what we're going to talk about later, um, but it can actually sense enemies. And there was a couple of times in previous Fallout titles to where, yeah, if you had dog meat, they would kind of growl whenever you're coming up on the enemy. But this dog meat actually, like, looks for certain things. Like, there was times uh, that you're coming up on a, a certain area to where there are certain enemies and dog meat actually kind of pops down to the ground and does her, does her growl and looks around and looks to exactly where the enemies are and I think that's a really awesome aspect that they added in to just make it even that more real. Another thing that I like that Todd and the team showed off is that there will be over a dozen companions in the game. You'll also be able to romance these companions. Now the two companions that you cannot romance are Mr. Handy and Dogmeat. But they showed off Preston Garvey who is the leader of the Commonwealth of Minuteman. And uh, they showed off a new companion whose name is Piper who runs a local newspaper at Diamond City which is the ruins of Boston's Fenway Park. It's really awesome that they're going to be able to give you this ability. Now, they had this companionship style gameplay in Skyrim, uh, but they haven't really been able to expand on it. So I'm hoping that this time around, with your companions, you'll actually be able to have more than just a relationship of walking up to them and saying, hey, I love you, whatever, or hey, let's have sex, let's do this, let's do that. I would actually really like to see a little bit more in-depth, kind of some side story stuff. Uh, with your companions. I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of dreaming a little bit too much, but it'd be awesome to actually be able to start a family. Now, I know that you could do that kind of stuff in Skyrim as well. You can have a wife, you can have a child that you adopted, have a house, and so on and so forth, but I would like to see that even expanded bigger in uh, Fallout 4. Now, another thing that I really liked is they showed off the perk system and how it's tied to your special stats. Now, the special stats 
Um, it's a little different than in previous Fallout games. Each time you level up, uh, there are new perks for each one of your specials that you gain. There's a, a total of, uh, I think, 70 base perks. So whenever you have each one of those, uh, there's multiple different ranks with those perks as well. And it's going to kind of give you a little bit more of a, a bigger, broader option of building your character around how you want it to be. Of either a sneaky or you know loud and proud, whatever, uh, a locksmith, well of talking, whatever. It's all it's it's completely changed from previous uh, Fallout's. There's a lot of similarities, but the ranking system is way different. And I'm glad that they changed it because they changed it in Skyrim based on previous Elder Scrolls titles. And this Fallout, of course, they changed that as well so it's a little bit of a different uh, perk rank up system and I think it's something that was much needed in the series there were three things that I wanted to save for the last bit of this video one of the things that some of you might think it's a little small it's not that big of a deal but I actually think it's pretty awesome uh, they also revealed that the character has more of a sci-fi fitting vault suit than previous years. Now, all of you know that in Fallout 3 and also in Fallout New Vegas, uh, the vault suits were real baggy, uh, kind of more of a like a jumpsuit or a janitor's suit or something like that. It was real baggy, um, but that's not how it was in, in games like Fallout 1, Fallout 2. Uh, it was more real, I mean, and I know there wasn't tons of detail, you couldn't like see every little bit of the Fallout suit in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Uh, in previous titles like that. Uh, but what was cool is that they're switching back to this classic style of sci-fi suit. It, it looks real futuristic and it kind of looks more correct than previous Fallout jumpsuits uh, because if, if you think about the style of the game. Uh, it's set in, you know, 2027 or 2270 or whatever the, the year is of the of this coming up. Um, look at the styles though. Look at how it's it has this 50s contemporary modern style or 40s contemporary modern modern style. Uh, and every time back in the day when they created something that was supposed to be the future um, it was real, <clears throat> it was real space-esque, I guess. It had this real kind of like outer space look to it. Even the cars, they had the fins, they had the big bubble windows. Um, you know, when they talked about the year 2000, they said that we'd be living on the moon by then. So, of course, Todd and them wanted to switch it and kind of give it more of that, you know, I guess astronaut look, uh, more sci-fi feel to it. And it really does look like more of a sci-fi-ish uh, feel. Not with just the suit itself, but the numbers on the back of the suit, um, the the neck of the suit, everything about it. It kind of looks more like a Superman suit than anything. It's real skin tight. And I think that's how it's supposed to look in, uh, in general. Not this real big baggy zip on, zip up vault suit. Another thing that had everybody in, in just huge like uproar was when they finally announced the date for Fallout Shelter coming to Android. It's coming August 13th. I'm really, really excited. There's going to be a big new update that'll have uh, Death Claws. There'll be all kinds of stuff. Mr. Handy for assistance. Uh, you know, you already have uh, Preston Garvey in the game as well on the uh, uh, Apple or iOS version of the game. Uh, and it's so awesome that it's finally coming to Android. Yeah, I play it on my wife's iPad, but I haven't really been able to play much of it because she has a little bit of an older iPad mini. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't really actually, it's not actually compatible with that version. So there's a lot of times I'm playing it and it just crashes. And I have a Note 4, so hopefully it'll be able to play it pretty well. And lastly, I want to talk about the awesome awesome gameplay that we got to see from Lexington. Now we got to see a little bit of gameplay before this, but the gameplay from Lexington just blew my freaking mind, dude. Now this is what I was talking about earlier of dog meat actually being able to sense certain threats. So while you're walking up in Lexington, Lexington has actually been taken over fully by really disgusting ghouls, uh, rabbit ghouls, and uh, it's really awesome how they do this. They show off a lockpicking system, they show off uh, how dog meat senses the threats. Um, while you're walking up on this building, dog meat starts growling and kind of looks over to the building and starts kind of creeping over that way. And whenever you get in front of dog meat, you see all these ghouls just start pouring out of the building. I mean, left and right windows, doors coming out from under the building. So you finally start shooting them. Now, the guy that was playing the demo, I don't know who he was, 
but there was a lot of kind of misaiming in the demo. But they show off that ghouls don't just die with one shot. And I don't know if this is something that they're going to have throughout the entire game. If you blow off someone's arm, they're going to still keep on coming at you. But ghouls take quite some time to kill. If you blow off a ghoul's arm, it's still going to come at you. If you blow off a ghoul's leg, it's still going to come at you. There was a point that the ghoul was laying on the ground, had no arms, no legs, and it was still biting. It was still going, ah, ah, ah. And he had to shoot it in the back of the head to kill it. That's a really awesome dynamic style. Kind of gives it a, a zombie feel to it. And I think that's what, what the ghouls were originally meant to be in this game. It's kind of like the zombies of the wasteland. So that's really it, guys. Uh, they showed off a good chunk of stuff. And I know I didn't talk about everything. But I kind of wanted more or less to talk about the highlights and what I was really, really impressed by. Now, Fallout comes out November 10th. If you don't have it pre-ordered, go pre-order it. Uh, and also, if you do not know this, Loot Crate and Bethesda are working on an exclusive Loot Crate that will be coming out the same exact time frame of the game. This will have exclusive Fallout stuff, uh, Fallout swag, whatever, shirts, uh, little characters, all kinds of stuff, and they're really pumping this up. I think there's going to be some pretty awesome Fallout 4 exclusive stuff in here, so if you didn't get a chance to get the Pip-Boy edition, go and subscribe to Loot Crate so you can get this awesome awesome deal that they're going to have. This is it, guys. Thanks for watching so much. Make sure to check us out at secondopinionpod.com for the latest and greatest gaming news, previews, and much more.